Grip, baby. Good time. Oh, We're about to drink Coors Light straight from the mountain's titty. <laughs> it's like, yeah, volcanoes, the caldera is just a nipple. And then beer comes out of it, like, like mother's milk, the blue mountains. Uh, I'm Peter Coors. Uh, I've been with the company for about 21 years full time. A fifth generation in the beer business. When you say 21 years, aren't you, haven't you been in the beer business your whole life? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Josh Edgar. I'm the brewmaster here in Golden. I've been in the beer business for about 20 years now. Came right out of college, made the uh, made the beer that your previous sponsor was, and uh, been with Molson Coors for about 12 years now. So. so is your palate like just insane? No. No. no? no. You're not I, able to tell like. Yeah, I mean, I can really? taste, and uh, you know, Coors Light's my go-to beer, and that's because it's our number one volume brand. So that's usually the one I'm tasting a lot. But uh, we have a dedicated uh, taste panel, yeah. and uh, it could be really anybody that works in the brewery, as long as you can pass certain certain sensory notes. But uh, you know, I do a lot of tasting, but we have some people that win. We do taster of the year across the whole company, and there's people that oh, are phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. They can pick up stuff that you couldn't even have. So how do you do taster of the year? There's a competition. And uh, there's certain, we, we spike samples uh, with certain attributes that, that we're looking for. Yeah. Very low levels. Mm -hmm. And if you can pick those up either from aroma or taste, then there's a, we have a score sheet. We should, we should. You should let us videotape that and like call it like a real game. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah like taster of the year yeah. is a competition that it, yeah. we were joking yesterday. It was uh, ESPN was playing Excel championship. So like people filling out Excel, Microsoft Excel yeah. sheets. Really? Like, I'd watch that. Yeah. I'd definitely watch Taste Through. Oh yeah, it's a lot more fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, for sure. All right, you ready to tour? Yeah. yeah. It's like no, the kitchen, no, yeah. so it's grain, you're smelling, uh, you're just thinking of you, the wine. Uh, taste the hops. There's no hops in wine, but what is going on? So what is going that? on? So uh, the brew house is where the brewing process starts. It's where we take malt, uh, we buy barley from the farmers, we turn that barley into malt, and then we brew with, with malt. So essentially what we want to do with that malt is uh, we make sugar water, sweet water. You want to get all the sugars. We're paying for that sugar content. We want those fermentable sugars out of the malt. And that's really the purpose of this, is for us to extract uh, those fermentable sugars. So it all starts with, there's each, each one of these is a line. So you can see there's four lines and they're running this way. Uh, it really starts over here in what we, what we call our, our mash vessel. From a mash vessel, we, uh, that's where really a lot of the, uh, the extraction takes place to get those sugars out of the, uh, out of the malt. So we use a Mira press, which is one of the most state-of-the-art filtration devices in the world. From there you have, uh, you've separated your grain, we call it wort, at that time wort, sweet water. Uh, and then it'll come back down here to our brew kettles. So these, uh, these two lines right here are brew kettles. And the brew kettles before you boil, you boil to sterilize, you boil to evaporate, condense it. And we also add hops in the brew kettle. Um, you add it in the in the brew kettle because you want to extract extract those oils in the in the brew kettle. So, at what point during the brewing process does the beer get separated into different types of beer? Like, or at the start, I would imagine when you're you know first cooking it, then it's just all the same coming out, and then you separate. No. So, each each brand has a brew house recipe. So when I fill a batch in where it starts, that first vessel over there would be my my, my mash my mash vessel. It is a Coors Light at that point, okay. or it is a Coors Banquet at that point. It has a specific uh, grain recipe, uh -huh. has a specific hop recipe. Um, time and temperature play a lot to do with what makes that a Coors Light. Um, light beers, 
are a lot different profiles than, uh, say, a non-light beer. Uh, you want to convert, what you want to do is convert more of those starches to fermentable sugars. So if you ferment, that's going to be less, there's the carbs behind. So you have, we have longer cycle times, you're going to be in that vessel longer for a light beer, because you want a longer time to convert those starches to fermentable sugars. Smell that? It's beer. It's beer, baby. Yeah, you can see in this one a little, little better how big they are. That is way bigger than I thought. Did you drink your way out of there, <laughs> Oh, wow, that's deep. History right here. We... It looks cool. Yeah, it does look cool. From an operation standpoint, it is not what I would call cool, but... <laughs> okay, gotcha. I, I'm just looking at them like, this looks like something... That yeah, this is Star Trek. Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We get that reference a lot. I've actually never seen Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I just looks for the lips. Yeah, here's a dumb question, and you might not be able to even answer it. But has there ever been a beer heist here? Has anybody ever heisted a bunch of beer from here? Beer heist. We had truckloads of beer stolen. So not only off our property but elsewhere. Like yeah, the people will come in and steal a whole truckload. Wow. Yeah, back in the day when we had free public tours, the uh, the College of Mines students. You would, you could probably call them by name because you'd see them here every day. Mm -hmm. So they'd come in for like happy hour and, uh, and then head out daily. But it was, it was allowed because yeah. we had free tours back in the day. They're not free anymore. They probably, yeah, they would come in like every day for a tour and just be taking notes. Yeah, they skip the tour and they go straight <laughs> to the beer yeah. tasting. About to taste some beer fresh off the tap. Couldn't be more excited. Yeah. All right, come on in. This is, this is beer that's being filtered right now that will be going to packaging today and be put in a can or bottle. Ice cold, Ice cold beer. What do you think the coldest temperature is that you can drink a beer where it's like not ice? What's the freezing point of beer? I feel like 30 it's, degrees? I think it's like in the 20s. I think it's like 27. Might be like a slushy. All right, so Jason runs this department. Jason, what are we tasting today? This is Coors Banquet. All right. This is our flagship product. You will not get this beer anywhere other than Golden, Colorado. Love it, right off the line. What's the coolest temperature that you can drink a beer at? Is it like 27? What's the freezing point of beer? Uh, we like to keep it close to zero, a little bit less than that going through here. Uh, we do snore. We talk about Celsius. Read off. Okay, so yeah. Zero Celsius. Yeah. 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 So Fahrenheit, probably 29 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Freshest beer that you can ever have. It's basically we're suckling off the Rocky Mountains. Right? Yeah, it's just a big, it's a big spigot on the Rockies, and they just turn it on and off. That's how you get All right, your beer. Alright, who else needs one? Alright, that's a slow I'm process. When you pull Cheers. Off the no, I, I, I didn't hear you say a word. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Cheers, Bill. Cheers, boys. Cheers, Billy. Oh, that's a good beer. Wow. That's cold. Delicious. Mm. This might be the best beer I've had. Oh, taste all the notes. You know, I don't have to, I don't explain the notes to the people. They know the notes that I'm tasting right now. I just know I'm tasting. I would like the to barley, the hops, etc., etc. I'd like to take a bath. Hops the hops are hopping. That is true, Hank. There you go, Peter. You got my beer house over catches on fire. I want the fireman to come to the place. All right, who's next? Here we go. Man, that was good. Huh. All right, Billy, I think you've had enough. Yeah, Billy. It's okay. Billy, it's, it's 10 30 in the morning. <laughs> that's, that's good. You get four samples in a glass about this size. And we rate it on everything from sweetness to hoppiness to bitterness to, and then there's some off notes and if we see them, we, got, we know we have a problem. And then we give that feedback to the brewers and, and we make adjustments as needed. But uh, Jason's also an, a, an advanced taster. Uh, and there's nothing better than walking, walking out of your boss's office and saying, hey, I can go drink beer real quick, I'll be back. Really one of the things that makes Coors very unique uh, because if you pasteurize a beer to make it uh, stable microbiologically, it can end up uh, reducing the shelf life of the beer. 
So it heats it up and that sort of degrades the flavor a little bit. So with Coors, we sterile fill going into the package at cold temperatures, and that allows us to have a more, a longer shelf life with a more stable flavor. Yeah, how's it taste? Great. Unbelievable. Nice, nice. Really yeah. This is going to complete the look. Oh, ghost of the lock on this can. This ice cold can of Coors Light. You guys hear me? Permission to fire. You're playing red. You like it red because. Can you hear me? I'm in danger zone. Can't hear Jake either. It's always fun when you're sitting here on a you know Tuesday afternoon and see the snow start to come over the mountains. And that's that. Yeah, so this bill, uh, this is Bill's pub. It's named after my great uncle, uh, Bill Coors, who passed away a couple years ago. Kind of coming out of World War II into the 50s and 60s was when it really that ex expansion happened uh, for us. A lot of that is during World War II, we sold a lot of our beer to the military, so people from all over the country had a chance to taste it. And the last state we went into was uh, Indiana in uh, 1992. So it wasn't that long ago that we, uh, we went fully national. But uh, yeah, it was really the 60s and you know, 50s into the 60s when we, we took a lot of our um, increased uh, distribution, kind of became a lot more national. Thank All right. You so Have a Thank great you. afternoon. The mushroom tour may or may not be more fun tomorrow. Yeah. I just, you know. <laughs> All right. We just wrapped up the course tour. We got to see where the greatest beer in the world is created, where it's birthed. I don't know. That was great. I want to drink every beer that's in this facility right now. It's a magical place. Thank you to Coors, the mountain tour here in Colorado. It's true. Yeah. It's 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 uh, Willy Wonka's chocolate factory went for grown ups. So beautiful, beautiful place. I kind of wish they'd left me behind. Yeah, I well, we should have left Billy on on beer yeah. alone. Yeah, Billy wants to stay. I want to stay too. It's a great place. Thank you to Coors. We appreciate Mwah. you guys. We love you guys. We're blowing a kiss. Blow a kiss. Come on, come on, right here. Okay, this is where Coors has. Mwah. Coors has my heart. Always and forever.